The $600 PlayStation 5 Spider-Man 2 Special Edition looks cool on the outside, but today we're gonna check it out from the inside. This video is sponsored by Whatnot, and I'm gonna be giving away this Special Edition PS5 in my next live Whatnot auction. So first let's break the seal, then we'll do a quick unboxing, and then we'll start the disassembly. And here we have the PS5 console itself. We have the game code in here, but first let's take a look at the controller. All right, I always love these special edition controllers. They always look pretty much amazing. And yeah, this one is no different. That looks really good. Such a cool looking controller. So this all looks pretty similar on the outside. Let's take it apart and have a look at the inside though. Now there's sort of multiple ways to get into these, but I like to take a really nice sharp pry tool and just pry up right there. That kind of gets us a start. I need to remove these guys to get to this screw right here. And the screw right here. So far this is exactly the same as the previous controllers. PH00, that's what we need. And next there's two little tabs right here we're gonna sort of pop free. Don't want to break those off it's not the end of the world if we do but it's just easier and better if we don't especially because i'm going to be giving this away to someone so i want it to be in good condition when they get it okay there we go all right and we're in and we have a 3.65 1560 milliamp hour battery so that's the same battery as in the other controllers. Let's just double check and make sure it is the same connector so you can replace it with any other battery for the DualSense. And the battery for the non-special edition is exactly the same. So they are interchangeable. I'm just gonna pull this one up just to make sure. Yep. So that's good to know. That just plugs in there. So, so far, everything is exactly the same on these. Well, let's remove this and check out the board and see if that's all the same. So the board on this new controller is definitely different than the board on this white DualSense controller. The white one's got a BDM-010 marking on the board. I also pulled apart one of my red ones just to see if it was the same. And it also has BDM-010, so this is the same board as this one. And this one is definitely different. This one even has two extra wires soldered on. So we got to figure out what's going on with this controller. And just looking at it, the yellow and green wire goes from the board here to the motor right here. And then the red and black one go to the rumble motors back here. So I think they've just switched which side of the board these wires attach to. But let's get this board off and have a look at the other side. They also have different connectors for the board here. This is a much smaller ribbon cable than on the old style. These are big wide ribbon cables that go there. The unfortunate thing about that is that means these adaptive triggers probably don't work to replace you know one of these ones from the new style controller to the old style. All right now we got the board loose. Let's have a look. Also let's have a look at these thumbsticks and see if they're the same. They probably are. And here we have a BDM030. So this is definitely a different model of board, even though the model number on the controller is the same. And we have what looks to be the exact same style of analog sticks, of course. No surprise there. So it looks like what they may have done is they may have added wires directly from the board to the adaptive triggers instead of some of the circuitry going through this ribbon cable, because the ribbon cable on this is much smaller but then also the adaptive trigger motors are soldered right to the board. Maybe that's because there's more power going to them for this newer controller. I don't know. And really the only other change I see is this piece that sort of projects the light where they want it to go. Uh, I don't remember the name for it, but that's different than on the older white controller as well. I think really those are the main changes on the controller. 
Let's have a look at the console now. On Monday, October 16 at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'm gonna be selling all of the stuff you see here, plus a whole bunch more stuff on the Whatnot app. In addition, Whatnot is sponsoring a giveaway of this PlayStation 5 Spider-Man 2 Special Edition, but you've gotta be there during the live stream. I've also got several other giveaways. I'm gonna be giving away two Nintendo Switch lights, along with some of my merch. Whatnot is a live auction platform where you can interact directly with the seller of the items. The nice thing about about that is if you have a question about the item you can ask it right in the chat while the seller is still talking about the item as a seller I love it because I can make sure that all the buyers know exactly what they're getting and the condition it's in now I specialize in selling electronics on whatnot but you can find basically anything from clothing to Legos to electronics to a whole bunch more so no matter what you're interested in you can probably find a live seller on whatnot I hope you'll join me coming up on Monday October 16 it's super fun to shop within a community of like-minded people here's how you can join the auction the first thing you need to do is go to the description of this video and click the link. My invite link will give new users $10 off of their first purchase. After you click the link, you'll need to create an account on the web. Then you'll just need to download the Whatnot app. You can use your login info from your web account to log into the app. Then all you have to do is search for me, Tronix Fix, bookmark my live stream, and then join on the day of the live stream. All right, what do you think? Are we gonna find something new and interesting inside here? Let's have a look first. Whew, that looks really nice. Got a little bit of texture on the spider, a little bit of texture over here. That's cool. What do we have on the bottom side? Oh, I got a spider on the bottom side. That's also cool. But let's have a look at the inside of it. First though, what model is this? We've got a 1215A. So theoretically, 1215A, if they kind of follow what they do with the PS4, the next PS5 coming out should be a PS5 Slim, which would be nice. These things are pretty chunky. Okay, I gotta put these plates in a safe place. They won't get scratched, which probably means I'm gonna step back and step on them and scratch them right where they are. Okay, cool. But is there gonna be anything different other than the plates? So far, the answer is no. But who knows what we'll find once we get into it further. Let's just start taking it apart and see what we find. Okay, and I can already tell we've got a much smaller board. I would expect that. And we have these awesome fan connectors. The white part is the part you pull on. Do not pull on the black part, because the black part's attached to the board. And if you pull up on that too much, you'll have to learn how to solder if you want to get it put back together. We've got an NMB made in Cambodia fan. Spins nice. Actually, it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a wobble to it. Not very much, but that is interesting. It's not like you can get these fans ever perfect with the, you know, this plastic mold they use for them. And now let's take care of this warranty sticker. We're our own warranty here at Tronix Fix. Just gonna peel it back, peel all the adhesive back. I probably should have tested this before I started taking it apart just to make sure, you know, I didn't get a bad one from the factory or something because there's something wrong with it now. If I start it up and it doesn't work, then there's nothing for me to go on. It's just, they can just say, cause I took it apart. But like I said, it's not like I'd send it back anyway. I'd just probably fix it myself, but still we'll test it at the end though and just make sure it works as long as I remember. Come on, there we go. So far, even the screw pattern is the same. I'm hoping we'll find something different as we get into it a little further here. This one doesn't have a cover over the manual eject function right there. It's interesting. The other ones had kind of a black thick sticker over it. And one of the things I always hated about those is if you stuck, you know, a screwdriver bit down in there, then it would bend the plastic. And sometimes it would bend the plastic down onto this piece right here. And that would actually make it make a bunch of noise when the disk drive was pulling a disk in and out. So it made it sound like there was something wrong with your disk drive when there really wasn't. All right, we've got all the case screws out. Let's take off this top piece and see what the next part looks like. Okay, and so far this is very similar to the 1215 that I've already seen. The, uh, I think it actually is probably exact. Now let's remove the disk drive. 
I'm gonna open this up real quick and just have a look inside. One of the things I've never liked about the PS5 disc drives is they're just, they're difficult and just kind of weird to try and get into. This one is configured a little bit differently, it looks like, than the original PS5 model, but I don't know that they actually made it easier to get into. I think they just put the screws in different places. So this is the awkward part. You can't like take this off because there's still a ribbon cable attached and the ribbon cable is like awkward to get to. So what I usually do is just, is just take the screws out for this board that's attached to the bottom of this metal plate right here. And then I just take the board with it. All right, and here we have the inside of the disc drive. Let's take this bottom plate off real quick so we can get a real good look at the inside. Check out the laser. And here we go. Yep, everything looks very similar. So no surprises in the disc drive. Let's have a look at the rest of the console. So one of the things I did notice is they put more of these black connectors on, on this model. So other than these black connectors, everything so far is exactly the same as on the previous 1215 model. So next I'm gonna remove all these screws off of this metal plate and we'll have a look at the board. Now, one thing that I will say that Sony has done right is this little plate they put on right here. This makes it so you can disconnect this ribbon cable without removing all of the screws out of the whole plate, which makes it so you can remove this whole kind of um, sandwich, the plate, the top and bottom plate and the board, so you can get down to the power supply without removing all of those screws. It's just these screws to undo this plate, and then you can get right to that ribbon cable. I'm pretty sure that's not why they did it, but at the same time, I'm glad that they decided to do that. I can't wait to see how the liquid metal looks on this. See if there's a dry spot or not directly from the factory. Okay, we've got all the screws out. Let's get this metal lifted up. It is stuck down pretty good, even with all the screws out, holy cow. Okay, let's have a look at the underside. Yeah, and just all these uh, little thermal pads are what we're holding it down. It's nice they're still sticky. We've got an EDM-030. And the normal non-special edition model of the PS5-1215 is also an EDM-030 board. Let's get this clamp off and the board off and have a look at that liquid metal, and then we'll see if the power supply is the same. Oh, that is stuck down good. Come on, there we go. Okay, let's have a look at this liquid metal. It's gonna be crazy if the liquid metal has a dry spot right from the factory. Oh, and it definitely does not. The liquid metal looks great. Got a big old pile right on the heat sink right there. Okay, well, that's good news. I would have been pretty worried if there was a dry spot right from the factory, but this looks pretty good. So the only thing left is to have a look at this power supply. So I've got one screw here, two screws on the bottom side, one here and one here. Don't lose track of these screws if you try and do this yourself because these screws are a little bit longer than some of the others and if you mess it up, then you run the chance of putting the wrong screw in the wrong hole on the board and making a hole in the board. And now this metal plate can come off and then we're down to the power supply. And to remove this power supply, we just need to push that way just a little bit. And then we can just pull it right out. So this is the non-special edition 1215. We've got a model ADP 400 FR. And the power supply from our special edition is the exact same power supply, but it's got a different number. So the good thing about this is you can use this number interchangeably with the previous part number. So we've got a PA-1401-JT3. So if you need to replace yours, this number will work or the number on the other power supply will work. So the special edition model of the PS5-1215 is pretty much exactly the same as the non-special edition, but let's get it all put back together and start it up and see if we got anything different there. Before I get these plates on, one of the things that I do want to mention is this 1215 model is pretty nice because it's got these large holes 
that you can get through and clear out the power supply from dust and debris because the power supply needs airflow. In fact, the PS5 does have some problems with them just shutting down because the power supply just overheats and just shuts the system down. So these holes right here are super good for cleaning it out. Now we just need to get the plates back on. And now it's time to start it up and see if it still works. Okay, and here we go. Disk drive makes noise, that's good. Power, and we got the PS logo on the screen. Let's make sure it takes a disc. And it does. And does it spin up? Yep, spins up just fine. So overall, just a few minor changes with this PS5 and the controller. And honestly, I have to say, this is a huge disappointment. And the reason why is because you can actually go and buy these plates on PlayStation's website, and you can also buy the controller as well. So even though this is technically a special edition, there's nothing that differentiates this one from someone that just bought the plates and put them on their own PS5. So while I do have to say this Spider-Man PS5 looks amazing, unfortunately, there's just not really much to the special edition tag. If you love the look of this PS5, Whatnot is actually sponsoring a giveaway of this exact PS5 on my next Whatnot Live coming up on October. October 16. I'll put a link right down in the description that'll take you right there so you can sign up for whatnot if you haven't signed up already and then you can follow my account and show up on the day of the live stream. I'm looking forward to seeing you there and I can't wait to give away this PS5. Thanks again for watching today and I hope you have a good one.